post by Opal Chinona saying Muti, I guess we're like drops the today. And yes. I see Chamsa is trending as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, quite a lot of things are trending. The Lamborghini, the yellow Lamborghini is trending. Do you know about the yellow Lamborghini? <laughs> no, uh, not sure. Pichani. Is that the one that was Pichani, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I saw uh, most of uh, most pictures are uh, the you know, uh, people were taking pictures at yeah. the Pichani, they were taking photos in front of uh, the yellow Lamborghini. Yeah. Yeah, that's what trending on my timeline this morning. Let's go to our face speakers this morning. Fine good morning. Uh, hi, good morning, guys. How are you? I hope you're good. Uh, thanks for the space uh, once again. Um, our thoughts are with Job Sikala as well. Um, I believe he's not feeling well. Um, maybe it could be stress-related or other ailments, not too sure, but uh, it's, it's something to, to worry really about. I think they did the same with Lookout Masuku at the time when he came out. Uh, it didn't last that long, uh, you know, um, from being transferred from the prison itself to the hospital. So I'm hoping it's not going to be the same with Job Sikala uh, as he recovers from the illness. Um, <clears throat> the topic for the day, the recall, um, it didn't come as a surprise uh, to some people because they knew exactly what, what Zano PFO is going to do. Uh, they're still pushing for the two-thirds majority. So this was just uh, a script uh, playing out. And uh, they've done so uh, very, very effectively in the sense that they're going to use lawfare to uh, subjugate those that voted for um, for Triple C. Um, for me, it also boils down to, I think there are it, uh, internal squabbles within Triple uh, C as a party, apart from Zanu PF playing a major role. I still believe there might be internal, uh, internal squabbles, which we might hear at some point as, uh, you know, the week or months uh, progresses, uh, because I listened intently twice to... Uh, you know, Tendai did this interview with Dara. Uh, and there are nuggets in there. There are things that he's not saying, the body language, the stammering. I know he's naturally a stammer, but the stammering by not giving, you know, uh, very comprehensive answers, uh, direct answers when he's asked questions. And uh, there's a lot, uh, if, you, if you revisit that uh, interview, you can tell this, it, something is not right uh, within the leadership. Whether be it, I'm going to name call here, unfortunately, um, whether be it Washman will be posting uh, the picture, uh, you know, where he was set with this guy who's causing havoc within Triple C, the SG, the one who's calling himself the interim SG, and also BT interview. Those are red flags for me. They might be major, you know, internal squabbles, uh, but like I say, uh, they will unveil themselves before we know it. Um, this is. Um, the death of democracy in Zimbabwe. Um, yes, we went for elections. We expected um, Zanu PF to act the way they've done. And nothing is going to be new under the sun. Now, here is the problem. Uh, I, 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 I was made to believe last night, I'm not too sure if that is correct, that the 15 that are, uh, have been recalled, um, they won't be able to participate in a by election if their case is not heard at court. Uh, because remember, Nelson Chamisa is challenging this. He's going to challenge this in court as well. So as long that case has not gone through, where well, he's challenging it, um, if there are any by-elections instigated before that, those 15 will not effectively be able to, uh, to participate. I'm, I'm not too sure about the legal technicality. Someone with a legal mind that understands the Constitution better will be able to... Um, to give us, uh, you know, um, a clarification on that. And the speed at which Mudenda has written to the ZEC electoral body, for me as well, big red flag. Uh, what is he playing at? Is he working under instruction? And are they going to push the by-elections as soon as yesterday? And um, for the why? So it's all playing out to be, uh, you know, ZANU just being ZANU trying to get the two-thirds majority. And also, um, you know, there are a lot of things that I suppose are happening in the background, particularly in the opposition. But uh, I'll let others, you know, give their submissions, but worrying times and moments for Zimbabwe. I've always said elections in Zimbabwe will not bring the change that we all want. But people believe this is our democratic right, which it is according to the constitution. But does it work in Zimbabwe, um, in the Zimbabwean context? Uh, authoritative, uh, competitive authoritarian regime, will it allow you to do such, even if you win those elections? Since the promulgation of Zimbabwe, we have been subjugated to the same 
stance by Zanu PF up to today, and nothing has changed. And we are playing the same game uh, of, of going through elections, thinking things will change. I, I doubt it very much. In closing, I only believe either a political negotiated settlement uh, will, uh, you know, thaw the impasse or uh, civil disobedience, which is too late uh, to even try it now because it should have been done before the inauguration uh, in my taking, soon after the elections, after the results were announced. But that breeding ground is all gone. So now, if you try it now, Munanga go call for a state of emergency, and the rest is history. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, uh, Finals, for raising all those issues and, you know, uh, giving a broad uh, uh, reaction, really, to a lot of issues that have uh, happened so far. Now, uh, let's hear from Tandazani. Tandazani, good morning. Good morning, Nonsansa. A very good morning to my brother, Finos. Very good morning also to my brother, Brighton and Mark. And uh, greetings to everyone in the in the space. Yeah, man. Um, I think this is a, a very worrisome issue. And uh, we must start by condemning, actually, the recalling of elected officials. I think this should not be supported by all the progressive forces across the world we cannot have a situation where someone is recalled someone is elected by the masses of zimbabwe to represent and actually begin to articulate issues in the parliament then someone booms wake up and start recalling those people i think we need to condemn this by whatever means possible however i think triple c is suffering from the lack of organizational structures. I think we spoke about this and people thought that we wanted to know who is who in the triple C. But we were actually looking at the future run because he had Chamisa announced his interim structure. Right now, Chabang would have not imposed himself as the SG, as, uh, as claimed by triple C. Maybe he is actually the SG, but because he was not announced, they cannot accept him since he's now recalling people. So I think in the future, uh, future political parties should actually know that uh, in as much as the strategic ambiguity works, it does not work to some extent. Because right now, ICC is suffering from ZANU-PF's intelligence, also suffering from its own lack of organizational structures. As an organization, you actually need to have references. We should have known who is the SG of Triple C. Right now, Chabangu can claim to be an SGF triple C and someone else can come around again in the near future and claim to be an SGF triple C. But you can't wake up and claim to, re to recall ZANU-PF members because they know very well that Opet Mpofi is, al is a, a, a very much alive and we know the entire ZANU-PF structure. So you don't wake up early in the morning and recall them. Because the, 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 the references and the ways of communications are well articulated. But when it comes to our brothers in the triple C, it becomes very difficult for us to dismiss uh, uh, my brother Shabang and say, no, he's an imposter. Maybe actually he is the real SG because he was never announced. He was never, uh, 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 you know, we don't even know who the SG is. So I think we need to reach to a level where we also condemn triple C for not being clear to the citizens of Zimbabwe, knowing fully well that they are dealing with the, with, 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 with ZANU-PF, which is one of the most intelligent organizations we have in Zimbabwe. And they can do whatever uh, that, that uh, can make them uh, get the three-third majority, the two-third majority. Right now, it is clear that, they are, that their road is beginning to pave and very soon they are going to be amending the constitution. Very soon they are going to, uh, to be aligning the laws to their favor. And we are actually going to be blaming the triple C. We voted them to power. And when they get there, uh, they failed to stay there. ZANU-PF managed to remove them. According to what they are saying, they are saying that ZANU-PF is the one recalling them. So if you are an organization and uh, you are weak to a point where someone can wake up early in the morning and start recalling you and you do absolutely nothing about it, that means even if they are given power, one day ZANU-PF will wake up early in the morning and recall them. So they have to be a strong institution. They have to be a strong organization that is able to stand its ground. 
So I think the issues of organizational structures, the issues of intelligence in C needs to be revisited so that we don't have this in future. But we really do not support anyone recalling elected officials because that is actually a, 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 a bastardizing uh, the, 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 the democracy, bastardizing the choices of our people. Right now, the people in Katri Park chose that guy and you wake up, you remove him. The people in Lopengula chose that guy, you wake up, you remove those people. So we need to condemn this as all progressive forces and actually stand in solidarity with the Citizens Coalition for Change. However, telling them the truth that next time do not do this prepare for such uh, uh, storms because it will always come in different forms well thank you so much Nzan, for that contribution this morning guys if i just joined us this morning i'm talking about the recalls of the 15 triple c numbers of parliament last night what are your reactions what are your thoughts want to hear from you this morning uh please okay. do request the mic want to hear your thoughts around that let's go to our next speaker this morning i see we have got joined by mark brown hey mark, Br mark brown please do go ahead Yes, how are you? Yeah, uh, so that at least I can be able to express myself. Now, we're going to talk about this. Mostly, even though Triple C, why the, ask yourself why Triple C, I mean, why is Anu PF? They were asking uh, my structures at Triple C. That's the first point. Even though you triple C kaita ma structures nas still za no PF no go pindira mu those the mu ma structures a triple C and also za no PF chairu ngo da apa iru ngo da za no PF chairu ngo da apa iru ngo da one part state that's what they are fighting for and also za no PF it doesn't want all the fights all sa ruku tui tui wa awa it's all about chamisa. Kusungwa kurukuitwa wa nukuitwa say they doesn't want chamisa at all at all at all. So we can we can complain we can do whatever we can say this and that as long as chamisa is there in Zim politics. We are having the same problem, but nevertheless we are going to stand with chamisa and then whatever comes we stand with him. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mark Browns uh, A, for that contribution this morning. Quite interesting views coming from you guys this morning. Speak about speaking about the recall of fifteen MPs, and you know we still want to hear your views and your reactions to that. Please do request the mic this morning. But also, mentioned for me, I think what's quite sad for me is uh, the issue of recalls. Remember last time when Mons was recalling the MTC Alliance members of Parliament, right? Mm -hmm. For me, even the councillors, before me, service delivery was put on hold. Mm -hmm. It is me and two of the voters who suffered the Very most, true. right? Yeah. So again, now we're back again to the same script, same issues happening again, recalls of members of Parliament. It is me and you, the voters, who are going to suffer the most. And I'm asking myself, I know people have been asking themselves, so what is, is my vote worth it? Mm -hmm. If after someone rush woke up and say, I'm going to recall so and so, is my vote worth it? Mm -hmm. am, am I going to cast my vote next time in the elections? Yeah. So the issues play out now, and most people are asking themselves these things. Are you going to see more apathy because of these recalls? Yeah. The, uh, I saw a discussion around that as well to say, will people go out and yeah. vote then? Should there be a, a by-election? Well, let's hear from another speaker. The, um, finals, I see your hand is up, but we'll come back to you. Uh, let's hear what others uh, also have to say. Good morning, Bosalan. Hi, Nonsensla. Can you and Brighton hear yes, me? Yes, clear. Please do go ahead with your contribution. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. You know... <laughs> I, I, I really respect a lot of the contributions that are coming through from uh, fellow citizens here. But um, one thing that we always, that I'm, I'm seeing uh, as a rep repetition in, in Zimbabwean issues is this kind of, um, what do you, what you call it? What can I call it? Oh yeah, it's like this kind of when you don't see things as they are. Um, people who've been oppressed for so long, there comes a point where we, we, we are in denial. Funny that element of being in denial. We, we, we don't look at what's going on. We rather want to say things like, oh, whatever, so-and-so is to blame for our misery, so-and-so is to bl bl blame for our troubles. But let me ask you a question. When uh, the strategic ambiguity was being talked about and you were told that there are no structures, you're told that Chamisa is the only leader and then you've got the spokespeople, why did people were asking questions around that time? 
people were concerned people were saying but wait a minute is it okay is it feasible for there to be just one sort of line of command where what, what who are the other people who's in triple c and up to now we still don't have those answers i'll give you an example promise uh, the the what you call it uh, the spokesperson for triple c just to woke up in the morning and we're being told there's another uh, spokesperson for triple c was there a process did any of you hear about any sort of election or appointment that took place until you saw him uh, on a presser then you realize that uh -uh, there's a new spokesperson for triple c at that point i actually thought that oh perhaps it's because fadzai maere is contesting to be an aspiring mp and if she wins perhaps it'd be too much for her but then I noticed that the deputy spokes were still a deputy spokes or Stalos, yet he was also vying to be an MP, an aspiring MP for that. And then we started to ask ourselves, what should we to say, what's going on? And we even asked these questions. But guess what? Whenever you ask these questions, you are named ZANU PF. You are named, oh, you're, pro, you're retrogressive. You're a detractor. You are here to stop us from moving forward. You're being paid. You are fuzz. These are the answers you get when you ask these questions. So am I surprised that this is, ha this is happening? No, I'm not. No one should be surprised. Because for every strategy, you always find out whether that strategy has been effective or not. And what we're seeing is that strategy not being effective. Now that becomes the biggest problem. Who is to blame now for that? No one wants to point a finger. Everybody is like ZANU-PF. Did, did ZANU-PF force this on anyone? No, they did not. I don't believe so. We've had a situation from the selection process of Triple C, where they were selecting their candidates. We noticed that there were obviously going to be problems. How do you select, tell people that, okay, the citizens will choose for you? Ch uh, citizens, wait, Berika Mwana. Berika Mwana, someone wins ku Berika Mwana. And then you're told, could you know, there are other processes that you need to go through before we tell you who the real candidate will be. Now, and then those who lost during Berekamwana, including, uh, I believe, the current mayor, David Coulthard, he lost during the Berekamwana. He did not, he was number three or four. But surprisingly, when it came down to writing who was going to contest for the elections, his name appeared there, just like many others. And you think that there will not be disgruntlements in a situation like that. Let's not even look at that alone. They told the citizens that once you have selected your candidates, we are going to go through a process of selection and within a, uh, on this date, you shall know who your leaders are. That date never came. That date took months to come before people, citizens, or even those candidates who participated in the whole aspiring candidacy for Triple C, they were told who was going to be on the final list. Guess what? To make matters worse, because obviously they didn't want people to come through and say, ah, we are disgruntled or we want to appeal. So what do they do? On a Friday, they announce, these are the people who are going to be contesting in the elections. If, uh, and then remember, the Monday was supposed to be nomination court applications, right? Is that enough time for somebody who was waiting to find out whether they had made it through as a, as a candidate for Triple C to know that, no, you were not selected? Was that enough time? Was that fair? No, it's not. How do you tell someone on a Friday that if you're not happy with this, uh, become an independent go and put in your papers as an independent do you do we just wake up in the morning and decide which avenue you what you need to do as a politician it takes planning right it takes strategic uh, strategy not a strategic ambiguity but strategy people were not allowed to do so and that was a way in which is basically what triple c was telling people its own supporters so you now have a situation and then you want to argue after that that um those people when the double candidates he appeared oh they are fast they are this and you're forgetting that your own way of operating was one which could create squabbles amongst yourselves not that in it's infiltration from zanu or fuzz because that it's become synonymous with that whatever happens to triple c ah it's fuzz ah it's um it's uh, zanu pf it is never triple c a political party is not a responsibility. What does that remind you of? It actually kind of reminds me of ZANU-PF itself. Makambona ZANU-PF is a responsibility. 
that's why we're in this mess where you have politicians that literally will tell you to just pardon eh, sorry i don't want to offend anyone but i'm sure you all know what i mean by that so if you have a situation like that when you're starting to see the same traits that we see in zanu appearing in opposition <laughs> why 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 would why would we then see uh, can official mute his mic please i don't know why you'd, you'd do that why would we then see and think that th this is no different so in closing what i'll say because i can see the other speakers one thing let us look into this matter let us take responsibility can something did not work something did not work who opened the door to allow this gentleman whoever is writing and asking for the recourse to do it who opened that door it was triple c how did they open that door by not making it clear to us who their members are, who their leaders are. They literally have said that this create a Congress. We don't want a Congress. They've literally we don't even know what the constitution say. There's no information. And on one part they're talking about membership. Who is a member of Triple C here? subscription. I have yet to see somebody telling me that I, I am a signed up member. I pay my subscription. So how do we then tell the members apart from the supporters? It makes absolutely no sense for there to be one person who can tell you office of the president this is the letter that's coming from me what if i say someone is not with us someone is not with us that is dictatorship in itself and another thing you have to ask yourself the thing that the recall letter is allowed the constitution or the processes tell you that you are allowed to write to the speaker and ask for recalls we've seen this happen to other political parties including the mdc but what we've never seen but what I don't know if it's allowed is for Chamisa to write to the speaker and say, Kuti, these are the people I'm selecting. Is there a, a, a process that allows for him to do so? This becomes the question. So they opened the door. And unfortunately, those who are clever and smart enough are walking through it. And if anything that's happening, Triple C has, has got itself to blame. They created this situation. And if people don't want to open their eyes, ah, go man, dio and dio. Thank you so much. Well, thanks so much, Salani, for that contribution this morning. Guys, if you're just joining us, we're talking about the recalls of the 15 C members of parliament this morning. What are your reactions about that? Uh, please do request the mic this morning. Let's go to some of the comments this morning that I'm seeing there on this timeline. Someone says, uh, it is, is it impossible for the electorate in the affected uh, constituencies to file an application to sue Chabangu? The learned friends must act and advise accordingly, uh, asking the lawyers on the, on, the, on the platform to advise what's happening. And someone says, the thing about this regime is that it operates in a manner that makes sure that the victim is, is the one that gets blamed. Well, let's move on to another speaker. This one, let's go to Topsa. Topsa, good morning. Uh, good morning, Brighton. Good morning, non transfer. <clears throat> um, yeah, so I, I, I wanted to say something, but I, I do have to respond to the previous speaker. Uh, I really think that we're now doing extravagant, you know mental gymnastics to lay the blame at the door of the ccc when it's so apparent to everyone that can logically interrogate these issues that zanu pf is operating from a position of impunity this is akin to saying that in an area where there is a known serial rapist you blame women for walking or carrying on about with their day-to-day -day activities because if they get victimized then they shouldn't have been doing that. CCC, in whatever it chose as its strategy, has actually, against all odds, run a very successful election campaign and managed to get so many votes. So, you know, they are the main opposition. And ZANU-PF is now acting upon a letter from someone that has just plucked himself from the street to say that they represent the party. Even if we say that they did not have a, a Congress or anything, we know who are the people that speak for CCC. No one can stand up and claim that they don't know that. This is just a culmination of the impunity of ZANU-PF and the fact that they are prepared to do anything to hold on to power. And if people don't see that and want to lay the blame on CCC, then using the previous speaker's um, uh, you know, line, Ngomandio, uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. 
Well, thank you so much, uh, Tiboza, for that contribution. And uh, remember, Brighton, when Chavangu uh, wrote uh, the letter of recalls, there were 15 yeah. MPs and 17 councillors. So, yeah, yeah uh, we are also wondering if uh, the councillors are also, you know, going to go down. But, yeah, as you said, Wuti, you know, at the end of the day, it's you and me who suffers service delivery. A whole lot of things are halted. Uh, there's so much confusion as well. Yeah, but also the issue that people are bringing into on, on, on the discussion now, this of structures to mm. say people didn't have structures. Remember, but when you interviewed the spokesperson then promising corners to say yeah. to us they have they, structures, they, right? Exactly. So the issue of structures, guys, are uh, we spoke to the spokesperson on this platform on mm. I think a few, few weeks ago, said to us direct on this platform to say we have structures. Mm -hmm. So for you guys to say there are no structures, I don't know about that. Let's move <laughs> on to another speaker this morning. I see Geto. Geto, good morning. Uh good morning, brother. Thank you. Thank you for 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 for, for the opportunity. Um to, to begin with, let me start off with uh, journalists in Zimbabwe. You know, it, I, I find journalists in Zimbabwe is, um, um, you know, <laughs> I, I don't want to use any hard word, but look, because journalists or journalism is supposed to churn out information to people, and uh, people obviously are supposed to be enlightened with whatever is going on. If you look at the media that is going that would be international media and other medias uh, probably down south there and I've see, i see also in, down in kenya i also see even in zambia where i am you know uh I've, right now we've had this shabangu uh, case going on i've not seen any guy or woman from the media doing investigative journalism going to look for him and then ask him then hear his side of story. Zilch. There's nothing like that. It doesn't happen in Zimbabwe. It's, it's, it's a taboo. You know? So that's why now you get now a situation where people come with theories upon theories and theories and people coming, uh, 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 some people even threatening his life. Uh, like this guy, is it Dubeko? This guy from, uh, from, from, he's an MP. Actually, it's threatening his life to say this guy must be sorted out, right? Now, if we can't get anything from our journalists to tell us, put us in the picture, it becomes a problem uh, 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 in our country. Then the other thing is, have journalists even tried to understand about these recalls? Where do they emanate from? This law, whether it's a law, whatever it is, where does it emanate from? Because I hear people through hallucinations, they keep on uh, uh, blaming Zanu PF as if it's the one that even advocated for this. And yet, it is the MDC during, uh, 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 during the, the, the GNU. So you get people then coming up with all mixed feelings and emotions because they are not informed in any way. And the people that we expect to inform us are journalists. But it doesn't happen. You find a lot of journalists, are, I'm not talking about you, 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 you're trying to do your, 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 your work. I, 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 I saw you, when you when, when, during elections, trying to get on the ground. But if, for example, if you look at, is, is it HSTV or whatever? If you look at the kind of journalists that are there, they, they are called, they, there's a guy called uh, Bibi Mklanga. He asks questions, that 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 he sees on social media uninformed no research go, uh, that goes on and they arouse people's emotions you know now these people that are that are uh, uh, that are blaming zanu pf if we are going to have such kind of caliber of people and then if you're going to have a, 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 an organization like ccc that doesn't take responsibility whatsoever if these people are then given chance to rule this country, then it will become a real shithole. No responsibility. Uh, 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 acknowledgement. Then we are in deep uh, trouble. These guys, they came up with their so-called uh, strategic whatever. It never worked. They claim that, yeah, because we had some votes. Of course, they're going to have some votes because people were following Chamisa. You understand? People were following Chamisa. That's why you were obviously going to have votes, you know? 
but you, the strategy never worked. Today you are in this situation because of your so-called strategy. Because let's look back. The same thing happened when it was MDCA. The same guy, Chamisa, he refused to go to, to, to he refused to, to, to follow the constitution. What happened? The next thing, the whole thing was destroyed. Up to today, right now, it's, it's, it's nothing. And then you come up again to say it's Zanu PF. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can't take responsibility by asking your so-called leaders, that guy Shabangu, I would like any of you journalists, approach him, ask him. He's not doing these things out of, out of the blue. Some people are saying he's coming from the streets. There are pictures of him at the CC rally. He's, wrote, he's written those letters. You know, these guys are not even saying, even, even the letters that, uh, that uh, Chamisa and, and them are writing, they're not saying that there's no position of, SG, of, of, of an SG. You know? So, learn to ask your leaders, because they'll keep on lying to you, and you're going to, be keep, you're going to keep on believing a lie. You were lied to the last time that there were agents all over the place. In 2018, you were lied to by the same Chamisa guy. The same Chamisa guy made you guys to go in the streets to, to, to cause havoc by lying that he has actually won because he had all the evidence. And then he couldn't even produce the evidence in the courts. Today, just recently, in 2023, he came out on, 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 on a television, a South African uh, media, saying that he didn't even have from in, 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 in 500 and something uh, 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 police stations. And you still believe in such kind of a person. If you're not going to be serious to see with Imimika, Murukuto Pusiswa, and no wonder you said this organization is just Wapusa Wapusa. And, 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 and yeah, I, I, I tend now to believe what he says. The last time when people were shot and their, their, their souls rest in peace, he actually came out and said in at Harvest House, that was foolish to do that, to go in the streets to, 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 to demonstrate. But he incited people. He made people to, to have emotions to go in the streets. He made it. If you're not going to learn to put people to account, uh, then there's, there's a very big problem. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks so much for that connection to get to this morning. Guys, we're just joining us. We're talking about the 15 recalls uh, made by uh, Sengezo Chabang, the interim SG, Alike, the interim SG from uh, uh, C. there. Let me go to some comments before I go to the speakers this morning. I'm seeing the comments say the death of uh, intellectualism in Zimbabwe. We deserve what we have said to watch. Interesting, but we are out of our depth. And then some of the citizens are the victims in Zimbabwe politics, not the politicians. I spoke about this earlier to say mm -hmm. when these recalls are being done, it is me and you, the voters, who suffer the most. There's no service delivery there's no mp there's no councillor it is me and you the voter who suffer but also not this is our right mm -hmm. our right has been taken away by these recalls what then happens then yeah so sad, eh? let's move on to the speaker this morning okay um, well uh maybe uh, let's hear from shansha then we go back uh, to finals for a bit in shansha please do go ahead with your contribution uh okay thanks for the opportunity said uh what i would want to say is uh i remember there is a space that was done, a fundraising space, where Walshman Nuri and uh, Ostalos were there. I asked that, comrades, <laughs> you are saying uh, we should defend the votes uh, and what, right? But do we have mechanisms to defend the people's choice after what happened with Monzor? And they said, ah, no, this time around we have dealt with such issues. And now we are back to that thing. They said and promised us that they have taken care of that issue. And also, <clears throat> there is an issue that I think uh, has to be discussed when it comes to candidates in material land. Is this Nguni exceptionalism where we have certain people that want to be the stockholders of material land who want to decide who gets what and how? Because if you listen to some of the things that have been said by Chavao, you realize that according to him, there are people who are more Bulawai than others whom he believe they should have this and this and the others, they don't qualify to be candidates and to represent Wulawai, which is actually said, and it's a topic that needs to be discussed. And also, we should stop pretending that Zimbabwe is a democracy. I think the biggest issue uh, that opposition has actually done is that it has given us this false hope that elections are going to actually cure this dictatorship that we have. I think the, the chosen... Uh, 
uh, the chosen strategy of struggle to be electioneering is actually something that is actually a bad because we are not a democracy and I think this should actually show us and give us uh, other alternatives in terms of fighting this ZANU-PF nonsense that is actually happening because no right-thinking person right now should believe that Zimbabwe is a democracy. It's high time we find alternative ways of fighting ZANU-PF because now they're actually doing whatever that they feel like and it's high time we stop pretending that we are in a democracy because the opposition has always legitimized this thing and to, for us to pretend that we are in a democracy. We are not in a democracy and it will be taken as such and we find alternative ways of actually fighting and cure all this nonsense that ZANU-PF has subjected us for so long. Well, thank you so much, Antlansha, for that contribution this morning. Yeah, quite interesting views as well. And, uh, you know, um, let's move on to another speaker. Zama, good morning. Morning. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, first thing that I would want uh, to, to do is to just to concur with the previous speaker uh, with the issue about Uchabangu and, and Nguni exceptionalism. And it's because we're trying to create a non-racial, non-ethnic society-based type of thing. So, uh, the way he talks, you know, when Uostalo says his surname is Siziva, and you know, I insist on calling him Siziva and all that, you know, and you know, we are born with the type of person that we're dealing with is in a way problematic. That was just the first thing. Obviously, the, it's uh, to do with institutions, guys. And uh, I had to get her having his rant about Uchamis. This issue is not about Uchamis. It's not about ECC. It's not about, uh, well, it's about Zanu PF. In the sense that we're saying that our institutions, uh, like e parliament and the judiciary, really should be given space to operate without any undue influence. In the sense that Umtenda, uh, uh, if Chamisa is going to write a letter and say, Wuti, from my part, communication is going to come from me. Right? And we're talking about first in time. And it's first in time, first in law. He knows this something. He receives Chamisa's letter first. And Chamisa says, any other communication that comes after this purporting to be what I'm the leader of the party and so forth, and then you decide to disregard that later. That means it points to a problem with the institution. More than which I miss, I need to, you, we can ask for whatever from him, but the issue is what is uh, the institutions. We really have to find a way to strengthen our institutions to say, when we judge hears a case, when the Speaker of Parliament receives a, a communication from the different parties, he becomes, because as a Speaker of Parliament, that guy is no longer a Zanu PF man. He's supposed to represent Zimbabweans. So I think uh, we, we really have to try and find a way. I don't have the answers, but we really have to try and find a way to uh, strengthen our institutions uh, so that we don't have a situation where Sikala is in prison for more than the time that you'd uh, otherwise save when he's convicted for, for the time that, for, so sorry for the time that he's been charged with. So I think basically our issue here is like basically to do with a uh, institutions more than a, a, a this party and that part, so that when people occupy these offices at these institutions, they understand that uh, they're not there to represent their part, they're there to represent as uh, well. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Azama, for sharing with us your reactions and thoughts as well on that issue. Well, let's move on to another speaker. Good morning, Gala. Uh, good morning. Gala, good morning. Good morning. Am I audible? Yes, you're clear. You can go ahead with your contribution. Uh, I would like to say good morning to everybody. It's been a long time since we've been together. Uh, I'm Gala Kanishas, I'm a member of ZAPU, but here I want to speak as a politician uh, to say uh, the, the issue that we're discussing here uh, did not just start or wake up as an issue. Uh, I saw the issue when it was coming up on certain platforms. 
I asked certain members of the of 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 CCC. I'm a Zappo member myself. Uh, that actually uh, I know are always on pulse with whatever. And uh, I got to hear of that. I think it was on the second or third. Uh, when I put it up in some other groups on platforms to discuss, some people dismissed the matter as something that will never suffice. The problem now that we have, as one has said, is the problem of institutions. Let's not create uh, fiefdoms. Let's not create organizations around individuals. But let us create organizations that can be taken over or inherited by others constitutionally. Let's not talk of constitutionalism for the national for the national election, but let's also talk of constitutionalism for our political institutions so that at least they are actually governed by the, the very same principles that we say we actually represent. Uh, the challenge is that you can hear us talking about devolution of power, nice language, nice words, a uh, nice this and that, but do we really understand what and where devolution of power in institutions come from? If we are to talk about a simple thing about devolution of power, each and every one of us has got a district, it's got a court. In devolution of power, the court 28 represents Gwanda. If I am no, I don't have court 28, I am not really from Gwanda. If I have court 28 in the beginning and at the in the beginning and at the end, it means I'm 100 percent Gwanda. If I have another court in the beginning, it tells me that that is the origin, a district that I come from. So some of the questions that we ask sometimes uh, are actually because we wish to actually uh, live according to wishes but not build institutions and they build uh, accordingly to, to what we say we believe in. Let democracy not be about Nkala. Let democracy be about the future. Let it not be about me the present but let it be about the future. There were issues that were there within the, 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 the political party that we talk about. There were issues that were raised. Chabang was interviewed by somebody. There is an interview of Chabang on Studio 7 where he explains himself. I've seen, I've had, I've had that, that uh, he, he defense that he has. Whatever it means to us, it doesn't matter. But the institution, if we failed in the beginning to defend Zabu, in 1981, 1981, 1982, up to 87, until there was need for a political settlement. It is because we have failed in the foundation. Any other institution that wants to survive has to understand that when we talk of the undoing of the 1987 Unity Accord, that some want to purport and say it is there when people come out and say Zappu has been withdrawn. It brings in the issue of saying no other institution can survive these people, as long as at one point you do not want to believe in building an institution on truth and building an institution on constitution, but only want the constitution to work when it comes to national elections where you wish to take over the national power, but then in your local or in your, in your area, you do not want to actually believe in the same things that you are saying to people. Let me leave it there. Well, thanks so much, Nkala, for that conversation this morning. Guys, we're trying to wrap up our space this morning. Let's take uh, one more, two or three speakers this morning. Let's go to Bibi Kim Prof. Um, Prof, please do go ahead. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning, Brighton. Good morning, non Shasha, and everybody on the space. Yeah, I wouldn't have so much to say in as much as uh, other speakers have uh, partly uh, spoken on what uh, I thought I was going to, to put across the board. But now, for me, what is hurting most is uh, when I think of what uh, this Chabang has just done, doesn't he think for us, the people of Bulawayo, doesn't he think for us, the people of uh, Matevelelend? Because he knows pretty well that quite a number of us are living outside the country. We had to lose resources, we had to do something all we could do to go and vote back in Zimbabwe. And now he wakes up in the morning having convened with some other uh, sinister forces or some other people somewhere there where we don't know uh, to, to, to come and undo the thing that we did to come and vote. That is sabotage. 
He's really supporting us. It's not about him being the SD of the the, the triple C. It's not about uh, him recalling uh, uh, these MPs. It's about him supporting us. Because right now, if you check from now on until this issue gets uh, resolved, there's going to be a problem of service delivery. That one, believe me, you know, there's going to be a problem in service delivery. This thing can go maybe up to next year or even beyond that. Because I know and I can foresee that it's taking time. And at the same time, he must realize that the people of Bulawayo having voted for people in the party or legislatures of their, 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 their choice, they had it in mind that they have confidence in these people that for so long, for all these years, they have been marginalized. Probably these people are going to come up with something better this time around, in as much as uh, they were so many. But now, he, he wakes up in the morning, he's living in Matabeleland. He decides to undo the, the, the efforts of the people of Matabeleland or Bulawayo who, who, who had to go all the way out to go and vote under so difficult circumstances. It's very paining. It's very paining. I don't think if such people we can meet eye to eye, something good is going to come out of that. It's just that it's in Zimbabwe where probably there is this and that. But otherwise, these kind of people, they, they, they're killing us. They're definitely killing us. This is not right. If he was really the, the, the SG, as he portrays, why didn't write he, he recall all the MPs throughout the country so that we can see that he's is is the general is the secretary general of the organization. This is un, this is and was uncalled for. I think uh, I'll end there for now. Thank you, Brighton. Well, thank you so much Babu, for that contribution this morning. Let's go to our next speaker. I see you have Noko Kanya Penduga. Good morning, Noko Kanya. No Kanya, are you there? All right, uh, let's try one more speaker. The Tafazo, good morning. Tafazo, are you there? All right, we seem not to be getting our speakers there. We keep on trying to get more speakers uh, to join in and then we can wrap up our space this morning. Yeah. Hello. Hello, I can hear you. Yeah, go ahead, Tafazo. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, Said. Thank you so much. So my contribution is, uh, I think I'll go back again to the previous speakers. We are, the, the, the problem we have in Zimbabwe is about reforms. When we entered into the, and, and this election, we didn't have reforms, institutional reforms. The previous speakers are talking of the reforms um, of, of, of institutions. Um, you see that um, we, we have the parliament, we have the judiciary, and we have the executive. Now, I've seen that in Zimbabwe, these institutions, they are only there on paper. But when it comes to the practicality of them, they are not in force. Uh, that is what I see. So um, the other thing that I see is that um, uh, if you look at the present uh, government, they have all the power. That they have they have all the power to do anything that they want so what is the solution what is the solution that we have we as the people uh, of zimbabwe so the solution um, i'm not going any further i think the solution is just dialogue for now i think we need to talk we need to sit down and talk uh zimbabwe will not move forward if we continually go against the will of the people it is the will of people that is being suppressed here uh, i don't want to put the tribal card because uh, I believe when one is injured, all of us are injured. So it can happen anyway. It is unfortunate that this thing is happening in Matabele, but it can happen anyway. So thank you so much, Said. I think the solution is dialogue. Let's try to put up a transparent, whatever, a, a viable a dialogue of some sort. Thank you. Well, thank you, Tafata, for sharing with us uh, your thoughts. Let's hear from Padare. Good morning, Padare. Morning sight, we come here. It is it is funny and very abnormal to hear how people are, are crying and saying, Oh, you know, there is a problem here now, the, the citizens are going to suffer. It, it's not fair. It's not fair, especially us as the people who are always on platforms and talking to each other and showing each other where things are supposed to be and how bad things are. We literally critiqued 
PGC and its leadership from beginning of time. Here, and coming here and telling you that Chamisha is not a capable leader as you think he is. He's flashy, he's flourish, but he's not a leader that you'd want in, you know, to create an institution. People vote because of emotion, but now you are, you are also asking and saying, 15 seats, you cannot remove yourself away from the constitution. You can't remove yourself away from the Zimbabwe constitution, from electoral process, you can, from any rules and regulations that are set up. No, you no no citizen is above that because you've already come up and you come up under that formation of your democracy and say this is what we are as a group of people. So you can't come up and ask for more than what is not prescribed there. This notion of thinking that citizens and CCC are bigger than everybody or are more important than everybody else is wrong. This guy, for me, is a generational hero. Because, you know, 50 years from now, young people will be learning and thinking that there was a, 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 an individual soldier who stood up to a dictator and destroyed the dictatorship before it actually took over Zimbabwe. This is for me, this is what this guy is. 30 years from now, people will be reading about this guy in terms of the, the laws and thinking, how did this even happen? That and everyone thought things are done when ev when he thought he had just done everything that he could because he had the powers to to control people, to misguide people, and here is an ordinary Zimbabwean who is refused to be to conform to that to a certain way of thinking and say no, this is not normal. You cannot make us think in the manner that you want us to think and accept things that in the manner that you want. I, I think, for me, I don't know this individual at all. But for me, he's a hero of the day because I've always said this, this organization is abnormal. Look at what is happening in Palestine and, and Israel. It's generational hate that is happening there. It's not anything that you might think what it is, what it is. People are slaughtering each other there because of generational hate. And an institution or a group of people who foster hate should not be tolerated and should not be allowed to to, to you know to be you know to, to, to grow in a society. They are a danger to us all, to the now and the future. And we should refuse it. We should refuse it. You have another opportunity to go and select these leaders. If you go and select them again and bring them back, it's up to you. But at the end of the day, someone has refused an abnormal situation. Someone has refused a something that he never understood. How can you just say, you see, what I don't understand is the people who come up on these spaces and, are, and literally defend leadership that is putting its fist through our umbilical cord and trying to pull our eyes out. I don't understand. It is the leadership in CCC that has put us here. And, and everyone will be pointing to ZANU-PF this. Zanu. If ZANU-PF is this good, let me tell you something, my sister. If ZANU-PF is this good, for me, ZANU-PF is the ultimate political party. Because Danu PF can protect the grave of my father, my grandfather, and my grand grandfather. Because it can oversee things when can actually see where the enemy is coming from. They are the ultimate leaders. If Zanu PF can actually pull this together, I'm not in Zanu PF command. But if I was there and looking and seeing how can I, you know, compete and compete with this with this individual. And pull this together. If I was in leadership in Zanu PF, I'd be celebrating right now that listen, this is a weak formation, and a weak formation is a danger to us all. Because if you create something and you say this is supposed to save a people, just think today if this was a government. Think of yourself, this was a government, and there's a war coming towards your country, and someone goes and pulls one on this on, on, on a government like this. The government will be disabled to the bottom of the everything. Plus that enemy who's coming to fight you will destroy you. 
you got to think beyond beyond just your, your council and beyond everything. you got to think geopolitics and say, are these people fit enough to withstand the powers of what's happening? If someone was to threaten today what is happening, the, the hellfire that you saw happening in, 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 in the Middle East, do you think this leadership of Shamisa's leadership can actually put up a wall and protect, just to protect a people of Zimbabwe from hellfire? No, it can't. It cannot even protect itself because it does not have a good, robust, uh, you know, constitution or it's not a robust organization. You asking and trying to blame anyone else in this, you are partaking in the formation of self-destruction for the next generation. You're not, if you come up here and cry over what you've just done, what Shamisa has just done in these people, you're partaking in in, 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 in in a position of weakening the next generation. It means this thing is not fit for purpose. That's what we need to be. This is what the new generation is supposed to be looking at. The Lani came up here. She articulated everything. This young lady, in the very stages of the formation of CCC, she was the most vocal person in supporting this organization. And then she came up and said, give us transpa trans transparency, tell us about those. And I remember Give those Talos coming to a, a platform and actually ridiculing this young girl. She went on an onslaught of people abusing her because Give those Talos had come up and told her off for doing certain things, for asking for accountability. Many normalize the abnormal, but she stood and said, this is not right. There is no difference with Stellani. There is no difference from what this guy has just done. This guy has held CCC to account for its action. But you I, and I, I, I are to to land, to about to wrap up the show this morning. To land. You and I are supposed to be celebrating this guy. But we don't know what it was to come. You cannot put this guy to an abnormal position. You can't. If you see yourself, I can see a lot of these yellow thumbs down from CCC people because they have accepted the abnormal to be normal. They don't see anything beyond what's right. They can see a leader who's literally destroying and partaking. Listen, if it's if it's if it's anything. If you don't think this guy is dangerous, he told you that Skylink was coming to Zimbabwe. What has happened in Zambia? So this guy was in cahoots with, with you know, with, with the terror. These guys, I told you, cite before, and I used the word terrorist. Padare, thank you so much for your time. Uh, unfortunately, we're running out of time, Padare. Uh, thank you so much. But just remember what I said. He's the thanks weekend. so much, Padare, for your time this morning. As we try to move on with the show this morning, guys, let's try to end off the show with another speaker. One more speaker. We have seen this Grantin soldier from ZNA. Uh, please do go ahead. Please do be brief and then wrap up the show this morning. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I would really say that yeah, uh, it's been hard to to listen to the uh, previous speaker. Uh, that is it, may. Um, I don't know what's what's wrong with uh, ZANPF. Because here yeah, we don't have to go around and try to go in circles. This this instruction to recall members of parliament is coming from Nangago. He's the one that gave the instruction to the speaker of parliament. Was the way I know uh, Jacob Mdenda, not supporting him. But the way I know him, and I said, he's a lawyer. He knows very well that you cannot do that. You can't, you can't do that, I understand. You can't try to overturn the will of the people. This is, this is upset in its, in, its, in, its, in, in its entirety. This is a charade. This is very unfortunate that you disregard the will of the people. The very will of the people. People, people raised money. People killed people. And, and and as much as that region, the Blawai region is concerned, the ballots were late, people stayed late at night, so people they can queue to vote. Only for one person to connive with the with the with the with the with the with the enemies of darkness and go on and recall the people that have been elected. People they campaigned, those members of parliament used their own resources. 
even their leader Chamisa campaigned, he traveled, he told throughout the country just for one person to wake up one day and connive with people and overturn the will of the people. This is not about ZANPF or about Chamisa. I've seen people talking about the structures and what what. It's not, this is not about structures, but it's about the will of the people. The people voted. If you don't respect, if you don't respect Chamisa, if you don't respect CC, but at least respect the will of the people. Respect the will of the people. Disrespecting people in that manner. And then you talk about unity that uh, the country must move forward. And once you are, you are, you are, once you are busy provoking well, almost half of the population, or the voting population, should I say. No, this one is, 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 is wrong. And those ones that are talking, trying to blame Chamisa, the likes of Padari, I think they must, they must, must try to add more. You must try to add more, is it cigarette or whatever it is, in whatever people are smoking, I understand. Because I don't understand this, uh, this whole thing. I'm out. Well, uh, thank you, Msoja, for that contribution this morning. Quite interesting views about uh, uh, C as a party, the leadership there, uh, issues of structures, issue, issues of our institutions, really, as Zimbabweans, and also uh, about Chabangu and what it stands for as well. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a, a, a wonderful discussion, right? Yeah, we've come to the end of the show, guys, this morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Remember, we're talking about the 15 recalled C members. Remember, the Speaker of National Assembly, Jacob Mutenda, has declared the C 15 uh, seats vacant in Matebe Land as well as Bulawayo uh, following the, uh, the recall on Paisengezo, the Chavang, the interim, and quotes the interim SG for Triple C. Yeah, quite interesting conversation to have here this morning, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Please do go to our Facebook page. There's a show there, Breakfast Club, is happening now, where we're showcasing and also interviewing uh, Melissa Ngube, the director of Pro Youth. She's speaking about issues of mental health. Today, remember, it's Mental Health Awareness Day. So go, go there and watch the show. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on X and follow us on TikTok and like our Twitter page where we have Alice, the presenter, AI presenter. Yes, uh, AI site ZW. Otherwise, uh, it's been a wonderful discussion. Remember, we'll be here every weekday from 8.30 to 9.30 to discuss uh, everything else around in, in, uh, happening in Zimbabwe, current affairs, politics, and all that. Otherwise, for myself, non-shan-shan-mapigwa. And bright to move. It's bye, bye for now. now.